What's up, McNuggets? So today we're talking about how to get some big, succulent, juicy, thick as a brick rear delts. And yes, I have had more coffee than usual today. So why train your rear delts? First reason, they look freaking cool, okay? Gram for gram of putting muscle anywhere on your body, I would say rear delts are going to make you look more jacked than any other place. With the exception of, you know, maybe the neck, maybe the side delts, but either way, it's a good place to invest in at the moment. And let's face it, due to physique inflation, you need all the help you can get. And you basically see your rear delts all the time. Unless you're facing the person, the camera, whatever, you see them from every pose. You see them from the side, you know, your side chest, your side triceps or whatever. You see them in the back poses. You see them in the, you see them even in the most muscular. You could see that, that bad boy popping out from the back, okay? So they're important. Furthermore, they also keep you healthy. If you're doing a whole bunch of bench pressing, yes, I'm talking to you, and a lot of pressing, your front delts are probably gonna be pretty well developed, but if you neglect your rear delts, that front to back imbalance might, might put you at risk for injury. So you want to be balanced front to back. Now, firstly, to get this out of the way, presses are overall not a great way to train your rear delts. You could say maybe like an Arnold press as you're going back. Looks like I'm trying to fight the camera. As you're going back, maybe like there's a little bit of rear delt there. But overall, the rear delt is going to pull back, okay? Or it's going to pull to the side. But it's not going to be really active when you're doing overhead work, okay? Even if it's behind the neck, that's still going to be mostly front delt with a little bit of side delt. And the rear delt is really not going to be doing a whole lot. Also, deadlifts, yeah, there is a weight hanging from your arms, and there might be a little bit of tension during the movement, but overall, this is not a very efficient way to go about building your rear delts. Now, vertical pulls, like pull-ups, pull-downs with a variety of grips, the rear delts are going to be active because you are using them in conjunction with the lats and the traps and the biceps and the forearms, but I don't think most people are going to maximize their rear delt development just through pull-ups or just through pull-downs. Even if you're trying to focus on the rear delts as you do the movement, well, now you're going to be growing your lats suboptimally, which is the whole reason you're doing the movement in most cases. Congratulations, you played yourself. Now, I do think that horizontal pulls, aka rows, are quite good, depending on exactly how you do them. If you're tucking the elbows a lot, and you're focusing on the lats and driving down, it's not gonna be a lot of rear delts. It might be a little bit, but due to focusing on the lats, it's gonna be more lats. Duh. On the other hand, if you are a little bit more flared out, perhaps somewhere around 45 degrees, maybe even a little bit higher, that will be quite a bit of rear delts, especially if you're not using an underhand grip, but you're using neutral or maybe overhand, that will typically be quite a bit of rear delts. So if you're doing a helms row, a chest supported row, if you're doing a chest supported T-bar row, if you're just doing a normal barbell row, all of these are gonna be really, really good for rear delts to the point that I don't think everyone needs to do other movements in order to get very good development. If you are shoulder dominant, rows might be all you need. And you can check my first book for a whole bunch of rowing variations. I find that cable rows are the best for this. Staying fairly strict and not allowing the lats to stretch out, okay? So you're basically doing a shorter range of motion and just trying to slam back into that rear delt. However, for some people, rows will not be enough. Either you're not performing them in a way to really target the rear delts because you want to target other muscles, or perhaps it's just a little bit more of a stubborn area and you might need to isolate at least for a short period of time in order to you know, forge that mind-muscle connection or just bring it up to a point where it is more involved with the compound movements. So the first exercise is called a Powell raise. Good afternoon. Raise, raise the target, raise the raise our power, raise the policy to raise the power, raise the power. No, I haven't done them that much. I've sort of sprinkled them in over the past couple of years. So I can't really attribute my own rear delt gains to this, but I saw it mentioned enough on my post on Instagram that I think it is worth trying. So basically you are sideways on a bench and your arm is coming across you. So you're getting that huge stretch 
and you're going into that range of motion that most rear delt movements and certainly most rows are not getting. If you think about it, the rear delt has a pretty big range of motion. And if you want to get that full stretch, you have to be going across the body. And so basically you can take these beyond failure. You can, you can be just beyond the bench and you can be going sideways until you can't get full range of motion. And then you can keep doing partials in that lengthened position. Similarly, I think cable reverse flies are a good idea as well. The benefit is that you can do both sides at once. The drawback is that it is a little bit harder to get some oomph into the movement. Certainly you can get the hips involved a little bit, but I think you can't quite isolate the same way because you're doing both arms at the same time. Plus you don't know if you're doing like one of these, which, which arm is on top, hey Macarena, etc. I do think this is a good option and I do recommend going beyond failure. So usually the hardest part will still be at the end. So basically get to where you can't do any more full range of motion wraps and then just keep wrapping out until you can even add in like an isometric at the bottom where you're just like pulling against the resistance. But because you're so fatigued, it's not going anywhere. You can do the same thing with a pec deck. The rear delts are a very, very resilient muscle group. I've literally never even heard of someone tearing their rear delt. I've heard of lat tears, they're pretty rare. I've heard of trap tears, even more rare. A rear delt tear? I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but it's just not something that is gonna happen the vast, vast majority of the time. So for the pec deck, I like to go, again, with full range of motion to failure, to where you can barely get that last little piece of the range of motion, and then just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah, oh, it's failure. Oh, no. Like, don't be afraid of failure. It's rear delts. It's rear delts, okay? Don't don't be a pussy. So basically, just keep going until you can't get any range of motion at all, and you're basically doing these tiny little reps. Someone said, oh, those reps aren't doing anything. They are. They still are. For me, what also helped a ton were what John Meadows used to call hang in swingers. So basically you do a chest supported rear delt raise with very, very, very heavy weight. So like two or even three times as much weight as you could with full range of motion. And you, you basically just try to get these tiny little baby reps and you just keep going. Often at the top of the range of motion, it turns into more traps. But if you just, you're using such a heavy weight that it's just this part of the range of motion, it's essentially nothing but rear delts, and it's that more lengthened part of the range of motion, and you're overloading the eccentric, because you know, you're sort of like bouncing out of the bottom position, getting that stretch, which is nice, but then you're, you're trying to control that overloaded eccentric as well, okay? So this is absolutely money. I don't do them that much anymore because they are that difficult, and even the thought is, and you can do drop sets here as well. So 60 reps with the initial weight, drop it in half, do 60 more, drop it in half, do like 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 more reps. Again, this is freaking brutal, but it works. A lot of people said face pulls as well. I think it depends on how you do them. If you're doing them athlete X style like this, and by the way, that's that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not the only way to do face pulls. If you're doing them like this, where it's more external rotation focused, uh, that won't be a ton of rear delts. But if you're going a little bit heavier, pulling a little bit lower and just sort of trying to retract and squeeze the upper back, that is gonna be quite a bit of rear delts. You could also do them with rings. Those are actually gonna be, in my opinion, better than cable face pulls, just because stability is less of an issue. You can just focus on pulling as hard as you can. Those are really good. You could do mechanical drop sets. So you start in a position where you are, your torso is more horizontal. And then as you fail, you step back, making it easier as you go. So essentially you are training to failure and then beyond failure as well. You could also do Y raises where your arms are a little bit wider. Those are gonna be good. Very, very challenging as well. For more on ring training, you could check my ring training for hypertrophy book. Lots of great options there. This is a very, very underrated tool to get those gains. A lot of people also mentioned the chest expander or band pull-aparts. I haven't spent a lot of time on these, so I can't really comment personally, but I think they are worth a try. 
and uh, Alex Leonidas is certainly enjoying them, so that might be worth trying out. One of my personal favorites are also called skiers. I did a video on this a while back, but basically you are skiing with a pair of dumbbells. This gets you a pretty insane contraction. I think a lot of people, when they do work higher up, like a typical rear delt raise, they feel it more in their traps. But with this, it's a really, really good way just to isolate that contracted part of the range of motion. Again, you go beyond failure. You can use a slight cheat, a slight swing in order to use slightly heavier weights. You can overload the eccentric. You're still getting a decent stretch, especially if you use heavier weights because the weight is sort of slamming into that bottom position. Overall, an excellent option. Now, in terms of volume, intensity, frequency, etc., volume can be pretty high. I mean, of all the muscle groups, this is one of the most resilient, one of the least exposed to damage and mechanical tension. So you can do a lot of sets. In terms of proximity to failure, to be honest, failure is just the beginning. My time has come. You must continue your journey without me. What, 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 what are you? What? This is not a deadlift. This is not a squat. This is not, you know, a barbell bench press. This is not a muscle group or, or, or movements that you need to really be cautious. And so make failure your starting point. When you can't get that full contraction, okay, wow, now you failed this tiny little part of the range of motion. Keep going. And then keep going. And then keep going until you're just a sniveling pile of human meat flesh and you're getting these tiny little partial baby reps and gun to your head, you couldn't get any more. That's the key. It's not just to fail. It's that you're trying to get that full range of motion and you're failing miserably. That has been a big game changer where I stopped treating it like other muscle groups. This is not your spinal erectors. These are not your hamstrings. They are a small muscle group that you just need to beat the shit out of. Just do a lot of volume, partials, drop sets, beyond failure, have you know sets that last a minute, two minutes, three minutes. I've had sets of rear delts that lasted four or five minutes. And in a lot of cases, that is what takes, that is what takes, oh my God. And in a lot of cases, that is what it takes to finally get them to grow. Anyway, if you like this video, you can consider grabbing a copy of my super duper awesome new book. Thank you to everyone who has already gotten a copy. The feedback has been amazing. Enjoy your new gains, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.